Welcome to this episode of Battle of the Games. Today we have my number five. That's right, it's out of order. Don't worry about it. Bunny Kingdom. Bunny Kingdom, for those of you who don't know, oh my gosh, there's a dog over there. Bunny Kingdom, for those of you who don't know, is a card drafting territory control game in which each of the players will get dealt a hand of cards and simultaneously you will choose a number of cards based on the amount of players in the game and at the same time players will reveal cards if they are territories to take over or buildings that you can build or you might have a objective known as a parchment which you'll just tuck in your side of the board uh, face down for the end of the game to be scored but you do that over four rounds in between each round scoring points based off of the things that you control and the number of cities that you have that are in each group of territories that you control, known as fiefs, multiplied by the number of unique resources you have. You do that four times, and then after, or between each round, which is four rounds, and at the end of all of that, you will also score your parchments, which are your objectives that are face down, revealing the secret things that you were working towards the whole game. If you have the expansion, there is also the in the sky board as the expansion is bunny kingdom in the sky. It gives you crazy amount of points. There's a sky board that has a, a buttload more unique resources. It adds some unique cards to the game trades that can and really enhance the, your stuff on the main board adds trade scoring in which you will multiply the number of coins you've got coins you've gotten Throughout the game, times your unique resources, your they're called luxury and wondrous resources. You get a whole bunch more points. There are some other parchments in there, but in my opinion, I've also played this almost 40 times, if not 40 times. It is a, such a simple game with such high replayability based off of that the entire game is basically based on the stack of cards, basically based on a stack of cards that gets randomly dealt out every time you play and you never know the combination of cards each player is going to have. So if you have a five player game and you're like, well, I'm going to build this territory and this territory has a carrot. So I'm going to also secretly take this objective that is points for carrots that, that you control at the end of the game. And I pass my cards on Kenzie passes me her cards and look at that. She passed me two territories that hold carrots. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to build up my little carrot kingdom. But meanwhile, I passed Kevin you know, the one territory card that's going to connect his giant kingdoms. And now all of a sudden he's scoring triple the points based off of the cities and resources he has. So it's a little bit of a a game where you, you kind of, it's it's all closed knowledge until you reveal the, what you've chosen. So some people will not like that it's essentially random, especially the first turn because you don't know what everyone else was dealt you have an idea of what they have after you pass a card or you, your cards but i don't know i just really like the variability in it no no one game is ever going to be the same so something i really like and this kind of has a little sweetheart story in our in our house so yeah okay kev we'll go with the start with you kev okay um i like the game it's a lot of fun um, to me, this is one of those games where you have to meet it where it is. Um, the strategy is not deep. It <laughs> is. Well, I guess I'm doing this <laughs> yeah. every time you get a hand of cards. Yeah, it's, uh, it is, it is very much about maximizing the decision at the moment. There's some value in that. Um, I think it's, it is kind of fun to just be able to look at the cards that you got in front of you and say, Based on this seven, six, five, four, three, two cards, whatever, this is the best decision for me right now. And we'll see where that goes. Um, there's, you know, obviously some of the decisions that you make earlier on, you'll start, try to reinforce those decisions. Um, so there you, you can develop some strategy as you go. But yeah, again, the strategy in the game is about, you know, an inch deep. Um, <clears throat> But that's okay because it is a light game. The theme is really good. That was my nickname in high school. 
one inch deep. There it is. Uh, I think the theme works really well. I think every the 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 bunny kingdom piece of it kind of pulls the seriousness down to where the actual like complexity of the game actually is. Um, so it's it is it plays pretty quick. I think it's really that the couple times I've played it, it I don't feel very emotionally invested in my decisions. And I find that that allows me to enjoy a game in a different kind of way as opposed to a game where I'm like, this is my strategy. And if my strategy fails, that is a reflection of me as a person, <laughs> as a strategist. And and it can become a bit, you know, it's very different. Here it's like, hey, you know, it's fun. It's enjoyable to see how the game comes out, whatever. If you lose, you lose. It's not a big deal. 45 minutes, 60 minutes, whatever it, it, it takes to play. It's still really enjoyable. This has the thing where when your plan does work, you're like, you're flying high. Yeah. You know? Yeah, absolutely. In the sky. In the sky. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I would have, I would have won that game if it, if I understood the rule <laughs> about, or I just, no, it wasn't actually that. I just had to read the card. It actually said it on the card that you didn't get to, you had to ignore the stuff in the sky. Which was very frustrating. It, 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 yeah, it does explicitly <laughs> it say it. literally says it on the card, and I just didn't read it. So that was on me. Um, but that being said, it's not exactly the kind of game that I would gravitate towards um, because of those. It is just a very luck-driven game. You're you're dealt what you're dealt. Um, so this is one of those ones that's really weird because, like, the more objective rating for me is is probably closer to a seven um maybe even a 6.5 as far as like what the game actually does design design wise right but i enjoy it more than that right so it really is more of a 7.5 almost an eight depending on again like especially with the in the sky i think that makes a big difference i have never played it without that but I could also imagine that without it, it kind of brings it down a bit. So I'm gonna settle. I'm gonna settle a seven point five for this one. Um, yeah. As someone who's played the game probably twenty five times the base game, and then like fifteen times with the expansion, the expansion makes the game a lot more swingy. So oh. you have those bigger moments of, oh no you just got that connecting piece in the sky and now that is going to score 30 points instead of six during the, you know, sure. in between round. Oh, hey, you got the chimney thing or whatever that allow, that connects, yep. puts all this stuff together. Yep. Yeah, that's fair. There's That makes sense. I just wanted to say that. Yeah. Oh. No. No. <laughs> yeah. It's oh, we're wrapping. Oh, I did it again. <laughs> okay. I said clockwise. <clears throat> That is clockwise. Oh, for you guys. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, Clock tower? Oh. <laughs> uh, so, Bunny Kingdom was actually a game that when I first started playing games, I saw and never pulled the trigger on. I don't know why. Because you never you touched it. It seems rabbit. like a game that's like. You probably thought it was for kids because right it's Bunny. It does. It is. It is right up my alley. I really, I really, really like it. It's because you've never touched a rabbit. That That, that is that too. Um, but I, yeah, um, I do like the feeling you said it already of creating your thieves and like you have these two that are like constantly growing and then growing and then you get the card that just fucking pops, connects them and it's just like, <sighs> okay, but how is that feeling when someone else has that card and takes it from you? It's unfortunate and funny this enough, is very prone to hate drafting. One of my favorite parts of the game for some odd reason are the campsites <laughs> where you can ju- where you can put a temporary spot, a pe- temporary bunny on a spot, and as long as nobody takes that card, it counts as your space. But if somebody grabs it, that's not you. They're just like, "Hey, get the fuck out!" But it's- <laughs> yeah, this is my land. <laughs> <laughs> um, the the one thing is, there's math. <laughs> 
<laughs> I don't like yeah, the scoring. The scoring I don't math. like math. There's a lot going and the farther you go into the game, you're like, okay, this thief is three points. This thief is seven points. This thief is fifteen. It points. does come with a little math handicap. That is for you. that this is fair. It one, does. But one, it's one for point. the base game. And unlike uh, Boon Lake, this game is loud. <laughs> There's fucking colors. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like even, even. Without the bunnies on there, especially with the cloud stuff, it's very lo- which it I is like. A vibrant game. I like. You know that I like the colors and the and the the pops yeah, and stuff. And even even like when the bunnies come out and it's a full board. Damn. There's a hundred bunnies on the board. The the, the purples, the, the pinks. The, yeah. There's purple and pink. the pick time is immaculate. Yeah. <laughs> All them castles. All the castles. Yeah. Um. With the bunnies standing on them. Yeah. 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 But no, I I really like it. The first time I played it, I was like, "Oh yeah, this is the this is it." I should have I should have gotten this one a long time ago. Um, I give it an eight. Really like it. Right, you're I do not mind this game. Um, this is one of the games that when Sebastian usually is like, "Hey, I want to play Bunny," I'm like, "Okay, yeah, that's fine." Um, it's a good game to play with. It's, it's up to five players, and it's a game that is okay to play with five players because you're just simultaneously taking cards and then playing them. Um, it's not like a huge, oh, no, what am I going to do? Because you can just kind of do what you can with the cards that you're given. Um, it's a lot in the like the first when you get 10 to 12 cards. Um, Kevin, I think you would enjoy this a lot more at two players. It's actually a lot of fun at two players. Do um, you, because I mean, I assume you're taking, you see your hand... You're so, going to get that hand back. Multiple. No. How does that work? You do get it back multiple times, but in a two-player game, each of you has two decks. So oh. every turn, you you have the hand of cards that you may have been given. Mm-hmm. You're drawing a card that neither of you know, mm. and then you have the you have that extra option. Okay. So you have a whole other deck in each round that Not you don't know. Not only that, there. but you're also discarding a card. Oh. So you're taking a card out of the game completely. Okay. Um, so so you, you play one, discard one each time. Yes. Interesting. Yeah. That might be, I mean, I, that changes the game. A lot. Significantly. I enjoy it a lot more at two players than I do with a lot of people. Sure. Um, and that's how we played this a lot when we first got the game, because it was just the two of us. Yeah. Um, but that takes a little bit of the lock out of it. Like, yes, it is still cards, but mm-hmm. you're also taking a lot away from the other player. Well, that's. I um, mean, it takes a lot into the hate drafting yeah. part of it, well, but it it's also it a, equal. It makes it a functional part of the game rather than. So, like, I know some people hate draft in the five player version, right? Yeah. Or four player or whatever. They take the energy to do that. I. We've talked about hate drafting uh, on, the, on the pod before. It's not a strategy that I use because usually I'm always going to maximize my decision rather than minimizing yours. I'm not going to worry about what you've got. Only until a point where I'm like, hey, these are all bad choices for me. Then I'll take a moment to examine how best, right? But in a game like Bunny Kingdom, there's usually something in the hand that is, until you're getting down to like two or three cards, that then maybe you start to go look over to your partner and be like, oh, what do you got over there? Like, oh, okay, I don't want to give this so to you. So when we played, that it's happened very... with me and Sebastian. Yeah, see, I, I just had absolutely nothing that was good for me. And I was like, I I can't just give it to you because it no. would have connected his two biggest things. Sure, yeah. And it was like... Yeah, the, the other thing is because there is so much going on. I mean, like, the colors do help. I mean, it's not terribly difficult to, like mentally process what other players are doing but like because it is quick because it's simultaneous play like i don't feel like i want to spend the time Mm -hmm. thinking about like oh okay i've got i3 j7 and a4 none of these are anywhere near mine what do you go over there we'll see okay well the experience of 40 plays i can scan the cards and be sure okay yeah, no, I mean, and obviously, like, there's comfort and stuff that comes with that over time, but... I literally, yeah. I organize my cards of, hey, I want this one, this one, this one, and this one, mm-hmm. which is the best for me. I look at the board, and then I'm like, oh, I want this one and this one. And when there's nothing that's good for me, that's when I look at everybody else's stuff. Yeah. Yep. It also, the two-player version, like you said, it, it gives function to it. Yeah. You have a free 
hate draft essentially mm-hmm. every yeah. turn. I mean, you're again, like as a, it's not even optional at that point. Like yeah. it is a, it is a function of the game to hate draft your opponent. Yeah. It just makes it a little bit more acceptable. Yeah. yeah. In that like realm, which I think is why I enjoy the two player a little bit more sure. than more players. Now. And it's hidden. You'll never know. It just goes in a face down. Well, that's pile. not true. If, if you know the cards that you're handing to someone else and it's not the one that they drew, then you do know. That's some Especially serious the card that you wanted. memory recall type stuff. Well, if you were depending on that card, knowing that you handed it to them, but you, you're, like, you know that they got rid of it. You said you have two hands and no, you're no, no. drawing and dis- You have oh. one hand that you're handing back and forth, right? Oh. So you start with one, they start. That's fine. Yep. And a deck on the side. But you, have, you both have a side deck. Yeah. Oh, it's a side one. deck that you're drawing from and then discarding. Okay, so you okay? I thought you, for for some reason I thought you said you had two decks that you were passing, so you had like four. No. Oh, no, 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 no. I get it, I get it. Um, but yeah, so I don't mind Bunny Kingdom. It's not something that I would ever be like. I want to play that game because I go for more. Like when I want to sit down and play a game, I'm going to go for a little bit more less meat, meat luck. Potato. Luck based games. Yeah. Um. Even like. Calico is better for me when it comes to this kind of thing because it's still slightly strategy even though it's a little bit of luck with what tiles come out of the bag. Anyway, I would probably give this a six and a half? Seven? Understandable. That's fine. Someone doesn't like fun. That's fine. <laughs> um, okay, so for me, like I said, we had a sweetheart story with this game. That's the only go, reason why it's almost. I won't go into it here, but from that, is that day, a, is that a spicy? No, no. From that, you know, no, from no, no. getting this game, from the day we got this game, you know, we've had just different moments with it. In we the kind years, of actually, with in the, Hooters, in the years that we've had it, you know, we before we even had kids, we played it. We took it to Hooters set it up on a table and played it for hours in public and had people coming up to us and asking us, what is this? What are you guys doing? That's a board game. That's what is it about? No, it was just like a moment that kind of a core memory for me. Um, And I love the game. And even after 40 plays, yes, we got the expansion. And for me, it was not the game feels dry. Now it was just, there's an expansion now more stuff, you know, wasn't and there some another like mini expansion? Yeah, there we is, haven't played with it yet. And I haven't tucked yet. away. I the just haven't added one. it in. Mm. Um, and I will say, from what I read, that mini expansion seems like it's going to uh, propel whoever gets lucky. Oh, it's another one of luck. those. One of the. It's not necessarily more luck, but it it you rely on on the luck of your draw a little more for that mechanic. That sounds like because if you luck. don't get lucky and get close to the to the train tracks, you are probably not going to win. That from just from what I've read, maybe I misread it, but Damn. I still want to introduce it Six. at least once. I still want to introduce Six. it at least once, um, but we'll see. Maybe that's when we I play with I'll strangers play at with Flame you. Con. Oh, there we go. Dwayne will sacrifice his sacrifice. His time. I like the game. Um, and honestly, for me, it's pretty near a perfect game. I will say. The only thing I don't like, and I don't even want to say I don't like it, is the is the possibility to get hate drafted. And I think I would prefer it in a two player game, because if it's a card that they drew that they know you like and threw away, you never know. You just think you didn't get lucky and draw the card. It's weirder because in a in a multiple player game, all the cards are getting picked. So for someone to hate draft you. They have to pick the card. Well, it also, you kind of have to do it to yourself because in your initial hand, you're not getting any of them back. Yeah. In five player games, you don't get, you don't get your hand back. So you only get those two cards. So any of the other cards in your hand, if you're not paying attention to them and you're like, oh God, I needed that card. Like it's your fault that it got hate drafted. Well, I mean like someone just knowing you might need the connecting space. And taking it before you see the cards. Yeah. You didn't, I'm not passing these to you. (laughs) Um, But other than that to me. I have such good memories with this game. I would I would play it forty more times, and it's a nine point five for me, even though it is my number five five. Disclaimer: 
because what did you we rate, probably, probably what, did you, what did you rate wings? I was going to say we probably should have said this <laughs> at the beginning. You know, humans are our minds are changing. Our opinions are always changing. So while this is my number five this year, and it happens to be recorded post the wingspan recording, you know, it may or may not have moved up mentally. You know, I... Some other games may have shot up in the rankings since we initially announced our top fives. So next year, make sure to come back. I don't the five blame might you. be different. I don't blame you for having for a, making this a nine and a half for having a nine point five at your five for me. I don't blame you at all. Yeah, I think again. So like, there. I'm. Do you have something else? I just cut you off. No, I mean like, cause like. Yeah, it's a 9.5, and it's at your 5. It's only a 9.5 because experience, too. Well, yeah. How many, like, how many times are you going to play it, though? But I fell in love with this game the very first time we played it. Yeah. And I've never played Bunny Kingdom, and then after the game been like, that was a waste of time. I hated that, or I didn't like that. I have always enjoyed playing this game, and I will continue to enjoy it. Yeah. I, I think there's a... Um... I think it's acceptable to have a disconnect between your ratings and your rankings. Um, and I've been thinking about this quite a bit because we've been talking about doing a top 100 and I won't even entertain the idea of a top 100 until I can come up with a more like empirical system for rating, like really deciding like what is a, you know, like what makes, a what makes a game actual, of 10, yeah. 9.9, like, using some kind of like grading mechanism to say, Hey, like in providing language, a rubric of sorts to say, Hey, you know, how many flaws, minor flaws can a game have before it goes to this point or major flaws or the role of theme and art and all these different things. Like how does that bake into it? And, you know, I think you can do this like really empirical system and whatnot, and then still look at a game to say, Hey, you know what? This game by my ranking around all these games I've put is, is number 25, but because it holds a place in your heart, because it does something special, you can say, Hey, I don't care. The fact that it's technically, there are 24 games that are rated higher than it. I'm putting it here because this means something mm -hmm. to me. So, you know, I don't think it's, I don't think it's unreasonable to have like that cognitive disconnect between the rating like of the what game. what I rated design. Yeah. Exactly. Versus you know? my experience with the game, which is kind of my entire top five, because I think in general, I love playing heavier games in general. But for this rating, for this, you know, ratings mm -hmm. and reviews game, I went with my experience. I'm essentially rating my experience with the games and not necessarily my opinion of their overall design yeah. as a game. No one said this is the, yeah, I mean, like it's not, the top five, your belief of the top five best games of all time, it is your five favorite games, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I rate with my heart though. So, yeah, my top five is like, <laughs> I rate them high. Yeah, sure. That's, I mean, again, that's an approach to your rating scheme, and that's fine too. And we've obviously had a, a lot of disconnects on like how we choose to rate games. So, like, your 6.5 and my 6.5. Do not mean the same thing. Yeah, and that's also true. The weight, right? The weight of everyone's ratings. So, like, that's why we. As you, if you've watched any of these at this point, you know, <laughs> when you say like, "Oh, seven point five, like that's high for, you know, for Ken's, right?" But it's relatively. I don't want to say it's low for me, but it's very average, mm -hmm. right? So that's the difference. So unless we all agree to like a rigid system of rating, right? You'll never yeah. have any kind of whatever. So. But we don't need that. That's not necessary. I think if we understand where we're at. Yeah, I agree. And that's going to be uh, it for the Bunny Kingdom Battle of the Games review. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And if you haven't played Bunny Kingdom, obviously I really recommend you playing it. And I hope you have a great time as, as much as I did every time I've played this game. And we'll see you guys again with this game in the rankings video. Bye. <laughs>